All right, guys, uh, welcome back. We got more 1908 for you. We've got the uh, 19 and 20 White Sox at the 21 and 18 Red Sox. Look at the standings. This will explain why we're showing you the Red Sox with that 538 winning percentage. They're only two and a half behind Cleveland. The uh, Naps lost, as you'll recall, to uh, Washington in that uh, exciting game just two days ago. It's uh, Cleveland, then Philadelphia, St. Louis, and then Boston, all fighting still for the American League pennant. White Sox, though, only four and a half games out. A win here and a win there, and the White Sox might be back into this one. Um, we're going to take a look here at uh, the uh, standings um, in real life. So this comes from the Boston Globe on this day. This is uh, May 28, 1908. Kind of hard to read, but you can see it was New York, Cleveland, Philadelphia, then Detroit um, in that order. Uh, Boston was in seventh in real life, 14 and 20, um, but uh, Hope Springs Eternal um, in Boston, and there were all sorts of articles there about how the Red Sox had won, I think it was five in a row. There's a little cartoon as well to um, allow you to see what things were like. Um, and uh, the uh, uh, it was uh, George Winter, the pitcher, who knocked in a double to uh, win the game uh, for the Red Sox the day before. And uh, so that's the way that it was. And uh, we'll now switch back over to reality here and uh, the uh, Skeetersoft uh, NP3 game. It'll be Patsy Doherty here to lead off against Eddie Seacott. Seacott, 5 and 2, the record. 2.63 ERA. Most seasons as good. 1908, not so good. The roll for Doherty, a 13 for a 14, and he reaches the board of the walk. That'll bring up Fielder Jones. And you know what time it is. It's either time to hit and run or bunt. And uh, I didn't want to do that. I want to take a look at his card. And he has a bunch of 11s. So I think we will hit and run. Roll 23 for a 32, and it's a fly ball to right field. Gessler's got that for the out, went away. And, you know, in second thought, maybe we should have bunted. Here comes George Davis for the hitless wonders, and we'll try hitting and running again. His roll is a 61 for a 13, and there's the strike him out, throw him out, and that's what happens when he hit and run too much in uh, Skeetersoft. We go now to the uh, bottom of the first inning, and it's uh, no score. Here comes Amby McConnell. Ed Walsh on the mound for the White Sox, famous 40-game winner in real life in 1908. 7-7 seven seven is his record. He's got that 14-Q-0, which is really good, but we'll see if he can last. McConnell rolls a 52 for a 27. It's a ground ball over to the left side. Tannehill has that, throws to first, one away. Harry Lord comes up now. Lord rolls a 52 for a 27. It's the same result, same play. Ground ball to Tannehill, who throws to first, two away. Here comes Doc Gessler. Gessler hitting 323. His rule 53 for a 16, changed to 22. That's a little ground ball over to first base. Donahue fields it and flips over to Walsh for the out. And uh, we go now to the top of the second inning. It will be Ed Hahn to lead this off. Hahn rolls a 12 for a 24. It's a ground ball over to short. Honey Wagner's got that and throws to first, one away. Jiggs Donahue up next, rolls a 32 for a 26, ground ball to second, and uh, Ambie McConnell fields that and goes to first, two away. Here comes Freddie Parent. And Parent rolls a 12 for a 24. It's a ground ball to short. Heine Wagner fields that one and throws to first. And so the White Sox go quietly. You go to the bottom of the second inning, and it's still no score. No hits, no nothing. Here's Bob Unglaub. Hitting 283 is Bob. He rolls a 42, 4 at 9, and he'll strike out. First strikeout for Walsh in his 71st of the season. One away. Here now Denny Sullivan. Sullivan rolls a 44 for an 8. It's a pop-up to the left side, and Tannehill has that one. Two away. Gabby Kravath now. Rolls a 53 for a 17, changed to 19, and that's going to be a line drive hit over to the third baseman. Uh, Tannehill snares that one. And so we go to the top of the third inning. Still no score. Here comes Lee Tannehill. His roll 36 for a 33. There is a little Lee roll. And it's a 66. It's a pop-up over to the right side. The second baseman, McConnell, has that for the out. One away. Billy Sullivan comes up next. Sullivan roll, 41 for a 28. Ground ball over to short. Wagner fields it and throws to first, and there's two away. Here comes Ed Walsh, the pitcher, and he rolls a 22 for an 8, and there's a single to left center field, and that will break up the no-hitter. First hit of the ball game ends up coming from Ed Walsh, and that brings up Patsy Doherty. His roll, 13 for a 14, and that's going to be a walk, and so here comes Fielder Jones again. Runners on at first and second with one with two out here atop the third. Rolls 14 for 43. It's a fly ball over to left. And it will be Kravath, uh, Gabby Kravath, who grabs that one for the out. So we go to the bottom of the third inning. No score. Here is Heine Wagner. 
Wagner's rule 15, 4, and 11. That's a single to left, and he'll steal a second uh, with uh, Lou Krigger up there. Means there is a runner on at second base for Lou. Seven RBIs for Krigger. We're going to have him bunt. And the rule 12 for a 24. And he misses two attempts to bunt, so the bunt's off. His next roll is a 44, 4, and 8. That's a ground ball back to Walsh, and that sends Wagner to third. And so there's one away. Here comes Eddie Seacott. He's going to probably bunt. This is where the boards create a problem. He has one, two, three, four, five, six strikeouts. And we're going to take the bunt off. But normally you'd bunt with Seacott, but the way that this game works, he's going to, it's going to wind up with Heine Wagner um, being called out trying to steal home. And the roll is a 23 for a 32. It's a fly ball over to right field. And Hahn makes the catch for the out, but uh, the runner, Wagner, is able to score easily. And the Red Sox now have a one nothing lead. Two away, bottom of the third. Here comes Ambie McConnell again. And Ed Walsh is behind again. McConnell's roll, 31 for a 9. That's a single, and then he's caught trying to steal. And uh, with that, we go now to the top of the fourth inning. It'll be George Davis here for the White Sox. Davis is hitting 232. His roll, 21 for a 30, fly ball to the left, and Kravath has that for the out, one away. Ed Hahn comes up next. He rolls a 32 for a 26, ground ball to second, and McConnell fields that, throws to first. Two away. Here comes Jiggs Donahue. And Jiggs' rolls a 65 for a 35, pop up to the right side. Unglaub grabs that for it. And so the Jiggs is not just up, he's out. And we go down to the bottom of the fourth inning. Harry Lord leads this off here for the Red Sox. one nothing the lead. His roll 54 for a 45. Fly ball over to right. Hahn has that for the out. One away. Doc Gessler up now. Hitting 321. And he rolls a 25 for an A. Ground ball over to short. It'll be uh, Parent who fields that and throws to first. And there's two away. Bob Unglaub now. Rolls a 62 for a 12. That'll be a ground ball over to Donahue. And he takes it to the bag himself for the out. So we go to the top of the fifth inning. It'll be Freddie Parent to lead this off for the White Sox. Parent rolls a 35 for 39, changed to 36, no damage done. Next rolls a 21 for a 30, and that's a fly ball to the left. Gavi Kravath has that for the out, one away. Lee Tannehill up next, uh, hitting 165 and hitting 7th in the order. Rolls a 66 for a 0. The dice did a weird dance. And a 54 for an 11, so it's a single for Tannehill, and he manages to steal 2nd. That brings up Billy Sullivan with 1 out, and he's going to bunt. Roll 23 for a 32. It's a bunt to the first baseman. Unglaub fields it, flips over to McConnell, and the runner goes to third. Two away, and here's Ed Walsh. Walsh's roll 15 for a 10. That's going to be a single to right, and Walsh has his second base hit and has driven in the tying run. So Walsh now two for two, and it's a one-to-one -one ball game. Here is Patsy Doherty. Ed Walsh, the only guy you can get a hit. Patsy rolls a 42 for a 14. Seacott has given up his third walk, and that'll bring up Fielder Jones. And Eddie's in trouble. Uh, the roll is a 15 for an 11. That's a single for Jones over second base. Scores a run. Doherty goes to third, and then Jones will steal second with Davis up there. Runners on at uh, second and third with uh, two outs, top of the fifth. Davis up there, and then Hahn, and I think we're going to walk Davis. We'll walk him. And so it's an intentional walk. Would have been a 31 for a 14. That would have been a walk anyway. So the bases now are jammed, and here comes Ed Hahn. He's hitting 212, is driven in 11. His roll 54, 445. It's a fly deep to right. Gessler has that one for the out. Going out to the bottom of the fifth inning. That was a big inning for the White Sox, and they now have a 2-1 to one lead. Here comes Denny Sullivan, and we'll see if Big Ed uh, can hold on to it. Ed versus Ed today. The roll is a 44, 4 and 8. Ground ball over to short, and Parent has that. Throws to first, one away. Gabby Kravath up now. And he rolls a 66 for a 0. And it's a 34 for a 6. That'll be hit the right center field. And that gets in there to the wall. Double for Kravath. That brings up Heine Wagner. Runner on his second base. One out. Bottom of the fifth. 2-1 game. And Kravis roll 33 for a 7. That'll be a single to right. And it scores the runners. So there's your answer about Walsh. He can't even last an inning. <laughs> Without uh, giving up that tying run, uh, not to mention the rest of the game. Here comes Lou Krigger with the runner on at first. Oh, it's Wagner, and he's going to bunt. Rolls a 63 for a 30. It's a good bunt over to the left side. It'll be Tannehill fielding that, and he throws over to Davis covering at first. Wagner moves to second. Two away, and here comes Seacott. Runner in scoring position for him. The roll 42 for a 13, and down he goes. And so Walsh is able to get the pitcher out at least. It's more than we can say for Seacott as we go to the top of the six. 2-2 ball game. 
Here comes uh, Jiggs Donahue, rolls a 63 for a 32. Fly ball over to right, and Gessler has that for the out, one away. Freddy Parent up next, rolls a 32 for a 26. Ground ball over to second. McConnell fields it and throws to first, and there's two away. Here's Lee Tannehill. His roll 26 for a 30. It's a fly ball over to left, and Kravath ends up pulling that one down for the out. We go now to the bottom of the sixth inning. Still a 2 2 tie. Close game. Here's Amby McConnell. He rolls a 35 for a 9. That's a single, and then he's caught trying to steal second. Fifth hit off of Ed Walsh. One away. Here comes Harry Lord. Harry rolls a 65 for a 35. It's a foul to the left side. Tannehill picks that one out from the sky. Two away. It'll be now Doc Gessler. Gessler rolls a 36 for a 14, and he'll take his base on the walk. Second one given up by Walsh. Only the 24th walk he's given up so far this season in 126 innings pitched. You know, is Bob Unglaub. He rolls a 12 for a 25, ground ball to second. Davis fields it, flips over to Parent for the force at second. And now we go to the top of the seventh inning. It's a 2-2 game. Close ball game. Lots of excitement. Here comes Billy Sullivan. Four hits for the White Sox, five for the Red Sox. The roll for Sullivan's a 66 for a zero. And the next roll is an 11 for a two. So that's going to be a big triple for the catcher, Sullivan. And I bet that was not expected. Sullivan able to hustle around to third. He is fast, however. The infield comes in, and we have that problem again, which is that we want the pitcher to bunt here, but he has one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine out of 36 chances that result in Sullivan being thrown out. We just can't do it. You got to swing away. And this is a problem with this game. We've talked about this before, and it remains a problem today. So Ed Walsh is going to swing away. And the roll 46 for a 13, and he strikes out one away. Patsy Doherty up there now, and now we put the bunt on. Infield is in. And the roll 63 for a 31 is a bunt back to Seacott. No play at the plate. Throws to first, and that makes this a 3-2 to two ball game. Here now is Fielder Jones. Nobody on. 3-2 White Sox. He rolls a 35 for a 14. Eddie's given up his fifth walk. I'll bring up George Davis. And Davis rolls a 66 for a 0. And then an 11 for a 4. It's a triple to left. And uh, the Hitless Wonders have come alive. 4 to 2 now, Chicago. And here comes Hahn. Hahn is uh, 0 for 3 today. But the White Sox getting the rolls. His roll is a 22 for a 7. That's a single to left. And that scores another one. It's 5 to 2. And that's going to be it for Eddie. So much for Eddie Seacott, who looked so good at the beginning of this, and um, it has ended up so poorly for him. It'll be Fred Burchell coming in here to pitch for Boston. 5-2 to two the lead for Chicago. Here's Jiggs Donahue with the runner on at first. Two outs, top of the seventh. Going to hit and run. The rolls a 44-4-8. and eight. A little ground ball over to second base, and uh, it's going to be uh, McConnell fielding that and throwing to first for the out. But the damage is done. The White Sox put up a three spot in the top of the seventh. And uh, it's a 5-2 to two ball game as we go to the top of the 8th inning. Bottom of the 7th inning, I'm sorry. Here's Denny Sullivan. And he rolls a 44 for an 8. Ground ball to short. It'll be uh, Wagner, or, I'm sorry, uh, Parent fielding that, throwing to first, one away. Gabby Kravath up now. He rolls a 43 for a 29. Come back to Walsh. She throws to first, two away. Here's Heine Wagner. He rolls a 55 for an 8. Fly ball over to center. Sullivan, um, I'm sorry, uh, Jones has that for the out. And uh, we go now to the top of the eighth inning. Five to two still the lead for Chicago. Here comes Freddie Parent. He rolls a 52 for a 27. Ground ball to third. Lord has it, throws to first. One away. Lee Tannehill rolls a 61 for a 32. Fly ball over to right. And uh, it's going to be fielded by Gessler. Two gone. And here comes Sullivan. His roll 26 for a 30. It's a fly over to left. Kravath in left field has that for the out. And so we go to the bottom of the eighth inning. Red Sox need a miracle here, and here comes Lou Krigger. It'll be Krigger, then a, probably a pinch hitter. Krigger's roll 41 for a 28. Round ball to parent. It's short. He throws to first, and there's one away. And, uh, yeah, we'll put in, uh, trying to think, probably Frank Laporte will come in to hit. Laporte hitting 227. And his roll 15 for 53, sorry, for an 18. Changed to 19, and that's going to be an error on Tannehill. That was a ball that ate him up, so Laporte makes it to first. Here comes Amby McConnell, and maybe there is a chance for Boston after all. 5-2 to two the score. Connell's roll 16 for a 28. It's a ground ball to short. No play at second, so Perrin has to go to first. There's two away, and here comes Harry Lord with a runner in scoring position. 
His rule is a 46 for a 29. It's a ground ball over to first. Donahue fields that and flips over to Walsh, who's covering at the bag for the out. And we go to the top of the ninth inning. Still 5-2 to two, Chicago. Here comes Ed Walsh. And uh, I'm sorry about this. I forgot to uh, put in a picture. I do wish that this game would remind you uh, before the inning starts instead of uh, after you make your roll. We're going to have to roll that one again. It's going to be Tex Pruitt coming in. Pruitt with another uh, pinch hitting or another relief pitching performance. He's uh, thrown 11 innings, has a 2 0 record. Now here's Walsh, who rolls a 61 for a 13, and that's a strikeout, one away. Here comes Doherty. Patsy's rolled 22 for an 8, that's a single, and then he's caught trying to steal second. So two away. That'll bring up Fielder Jones. And Jones's rolls a 34 for a 44. It's a fly ball to center, and Sullivan pulls that one down. And so we go to the bottom of the ninth inning, still a three-run deficit. Here comes Doc Gessler, who is 0 for 2 today with a walk. He rolls a 32 for a 26, ground ball to second. Davis throws to first, one away. Bob Unglaub now. Ed Walsh looking strong. Unglaub rolls a 66 for a 0. And then an 11 for a 2. So it's hit the left center field and gets down and in there, and Unglaub goes all the way around the third with the triple. I'll bring up Denny Sullivan with a runner on a third, but remember, it's a three-run deficit, so bunting does nothing for you. Sullivan is driven in 14, 250 is average. And his roll is a 22 for an 8. It's a fly ball to right field. It's uh, squeezed by Hahn, and the runner scores. 5-3 to three now the score, and that'll bring up Gabby Kravath, and it's too little too late. Kravath rolls a 42 for a 14, and he gets a rare walk there from Walsh. Number 25 given up this season for from Eddie, and... Uh, the second in this game, and here comes Heine Wagner. Wagner's two for three, he scored a run and drove one in. And his roll 54, 445, there's a little E roll, we'll see if he gets saved by the bell. It's a 21, so he does. Can be changed to a 20, and that's going to be an error on the second baseman, Davis, and that puts runners on first and second now with two men away. And up comes Lou Krigger. Krigger is 0 for 2, and he sacrificed once. And uh, the question is, do we have anybody on the bench who's a better hitter than this guy? Yeah, we'll probably put in Larry Gardner. This is one of these guys that's going to be really hard to use since um, he hit fairly well in real life. We'll come in for his first uh, pinch-hitting appearance. Whether we should use him this way or not is a, kind of another question. We'll have to add him to our list of players to uh, do a little bit of research. In. So in comes Larry Gardner. Runners on a first and second for the Red Sox. Down by two, bottom of the ninth. And the roll is 64. That'll be an eight. That's a single over short, scores one, and uh, allows the other runner to go over to second base. And so controversy uh, begets controversy here. And the big question is, uh, should we have done that or not? Should we have used this guy to pinch hit here in the uh, bottom of the ninth inning um, with uh, the game uh, two-run ball game? And uh, perhaps that does give a uh, bit of a uh, unfair advantage to uh, the uh, – Red Sox, I'm not sure. You tell me. So we have controversy already. That'll bring up Tex Pruitt, and uh, we'll see who we have here on the bench. Probably going to be Jack Thoney who's going to come in to pinch hit. So Jack Thoney comes in as a pinch hitter. It's a one-run ball game. Ed Walsh is going to stay in this game, which is realistic. Runners on at first and third with two away, and we're just going to swing away. And the roll is a 15 for an 11, and that's a single to left, and that will score one, and that will send Gardner over to second. And there you have it. And uh, boy, I tell you, that was a real, real big decision, wasn't it? So Thony ends up getting the pinch hit uh, base hit. We're going to keep Walsh in this game, but uh, he will not be able to win this one, at least in regulation. Here's Amby McConnell now, and it's been how many in a row? It was a walk, and then an air, and then a single, and a single. McConnell now, who's two for four today, having a good day. And his roll 32 for 26 going to be a pop-up over to Davis. The second baseman grabs that one for the out. And uh, in a second, we will go to the top of the 10th. We have to make a couple of uh, changes here. So Gardner is uh, probably going to go. Normally, he would go play third base. I think we're going to have him do that. So we're going to change his position only. We're going to get rid of that. He will go over to third. Lord is leading off the next inning. We have to take a look at his card. And this is where um, this becomes kind of a... a chore to do. The Lord can only play third, so we're going to end up taking him out. We want to have uh, I think we'll have the pitcher here in McConnell's spot. So uh, now who we're going to put in is another question. Morgan is going to be one of our starters. I think it's going to be Tannehill who we're going to put in. And so uh, we'll put him in to pitch. 
Tannehill will uh, hit uh, in that leadoff spot. And uh, let's see who else we need. So this game doesn't tell you who you have and who you don't. We need a second baseman. And uh, what else do we need? We need a catcher. So uh, instead of uh, Thony, we're going to put in a... Uh, hang on a second. Let me take a quick look at Thony's card. Thony can only play in the outfield, so we are going to take him out. And um, it's going to be uh, Ed McFarlane, who will be the catcher. And that means we still need a second baseman. And it's going to be Lord who comes out of this game. Here we go. Apologies for the uh, confusion. And we don't have anybody who can play second base. Look at that. Um, this is where uh, <laughs> this is where the Skeetersoft system becomes really problematic. At least this the one in this game. Unglaub can play second. So we have to go around and start looking and seeing who can play in what position because there's nothing that will tell us what position everybody plays in, right? So now we need a first baseman. And I think, yeah, we have Deacon McGuire um, who will play first. We have to double-click him. And there we go. Now we have a full lineup for the Red Sox. And so now we finally can go to the top of the 10th inning. And, yeah, that's a mess. That's an absolute mess. It's It should be easier. It would be easier with cards. <laughs> Here's George Davis. He rolls a 45 for a 14, and there's a walk from Tannehill, and that'll bring up Ed Hahn. Hahn is going to bunt straight away. And the roll 41 for a 28. That's a bunt back to Tannehill, who has to throw over to Unglaub, covering a first. Davis moves to second. One away. Red Sox fielding has deteriorated uh, quite significantly here. Here's Jiggs Donahue with the runner in scoring position. He rolls a 55 for a 9. It's a ground ball to first. And McGuire fields that, goes to the bag himself. There's two away. Here now is Freddie Parent. Two out, runner on at third. And his roll 54 for a 45. Fly ball over to right field. Gessler has that for the out. And so we go to the bottom of the 10th. And it'll, it will be Deacon McGuire leading this off. Deacon McGuire must have been pretty old in 1908. And here comes the old man, rolls a 53 for a 20, changed to 22. That's going to be a little uh, ground ball over to Donahue, flips over to Walsh at first for the out, one away. Doc Gessler comes up now, and his roll 36 for a 14, and Walsh has given up another walk, and that'll bring up Unglaub. Unglaub's one for four. It's time to sacrifice, though. His roll 65 for a 35, and there is a little E roll. It's a 66, and that ends up being a poor bunt uh, down to the catcher Sullivan, who throws to his parent for one, and he goes back to Donny. I'm sorry, to Davis for the double play. So <laughs> Unglau bunts into double play, and we go now to the top, of the 11th inning. Here comes Lee Tannehill, and he rolls a 36 for a 33. There's a little E roll, a 36. So it's a pop up over to the le the uh, left. I'm sorry, the right side. Unglau has that for the out, one away. Up is Billy Sullivan, and he rolls a 12 for a 25. There is a little E-roll. It's a 51, and that's going to be a ground ball to second. Dunglaub uh, fields that and throws the first two away. Here comes Big Ed, and there goes Big Ed Walsh, and maybe we should have taken him out earlier. You let me know what you think. Jake Atz will come into pinch hit for him, and uh, Walsh will not get the victory. Atz rolls a 15 for an 11. That's a single to left, and then he steals second. And uh, so that'll put a runner in scoring position out for Doherty. The roll 34 for 44. It's a fly ball over to center. That'll be caught by Sullivan for the out, and we go to the bottom of the 11th. And, uh, yeah, I think Nick Altrock actually is probably the right guy to put in. So Nick Altrock will come in as the relief pitcher for the Red for the White Sox. He will face Sullivan, Kravitz, and then uh, Heine Wagner, maybe Gardner after that. Sullivan rolls a 63 for a 30. Fly ball to left, and Doherty has that one away. Gabby Kravitz now rolls a 35 for 14, and uh, he walks, and that'll bring up Wagner. Oh, boy, now you really have a decision to make. Heine Wagner's 2 for 4 today, hitting 265. Do you really bum with him? But I think that the situation calls for it. And his roll 55 for an 8. It would have been a base hit. Ends up being a bunt back to Altrock, uh, who throws to first. Kravitz goes to second. And here comes Larry Gardner. And so do you, this is the second uh, real decision that we've had to make in this game because in real life you pitch to this guy, no question about it. But if we're going to play like this, I think we walk him. So we're going to walk Gardner. And uh, we will click on yes here in a second. I just want to uh, capture a little bit of this here for posterity. 
Um, so Gardner will uh, be intentionally walked, and that will bring up Ed McFarland now with uh, two outs, runners on at first and second. And the reason why we did that is because otherwise Gardner gets a base hit and almost has a 50% chance of a hit. So here comes McFarland, and he rolls a 55 for an A, and that's a single over short, and there's your base hit, and there's the end of the ball game. So Ed McFarland ends up getting the hit to win it. And uh, that's all that she wrote in this one. The Red Sox come from behind with three runs in the bottom of the ninth inning. And boy, this game was filled with controversy. The Red Sox end up uh, scoring six runs on nine hits, no errors. White Sox, five runs, nine hits, and two errors. And one of those proved to be extremely costly in the bottom of the ninth inning. Ed Walsh uh, does not get the victory or the loss. He remains at 7-7. Seven and seven. Shows you how hard it is to win 40 games. And uh, the Red Sox are still in contention. The White Sox are still under 500. And uh, we'll talk with you again tomorrow. Bye-bye.